In today's show, I'll be sharing with you the five things to watch out for in the Bitcoin market this week. And as Crypto Edge shares here, looks like the US dollar currency index dev announced a token burn or something. And as shared here by Preston Pish, we got the Bank of Japan implementing yield curve control while the yen is collapsing. And we have the Fed about to hike 50 BPS while the dollar is making new highs. Something sure feels like it's about to break. And as pointed out here by Matthew Highland, Bitcoin comparison of the 2018-2019 bear market bottom compared to the current structure Bitcoin has been in since January of this year. We have similar time frame, a series of lower highs and higher lows, creation of a higher high and a pullback after the first higher high, crucial $37,600 holds. And as Red Capital shares, during retest one, Bitcoin fake broke down from the cloud before reversing. During retest two, Bitcoin wicked sub cloud before reversing. Now retest Test three is in progress. Bitcoin needs to reclaim cloud as support. It is crucial. Bitcoin doesn't flip cloud into resistance to avoid downside. And as Crypto Tony shares in this Bitcoin update, shared this a couple of days ago, and my thoughts have not changed. Looking for that sweep down, at which point I will then be looking for signs of a relief rally to play off from. Also in today's show, Skybridge goes all in on crypto, betting on tremendous growth ahead. Quitting their CEO, Anthony Scaramucci, we made a decision during the pandemic that we had to relitigate our entire portfolio. There is a pre-pandemic world and a post-pandemic world, and the post-pandemic world has a lot more government deficits. It has a lot more uncertainty related to growth. Also in today's show, weakening global economy could trigger the next parabolic crypto bull run, according to macro guru, Rao Pao. That's right. He says that while he is still bullish on crypto, the markets need a shot in the arm to ignite the next leg of the bull market, quoting him here. I actually think that we're still probably in some kind of the first phase of the next leg up. That's what it feels like to me, but we need to see something change. What is it that's going to change to do that? Also in today's show, breaking news, the Central African Republic adopts Bitcoin as an official currency. Another domino has fallen. Let's freaking go. The Central African Republic reportedly passes a bill to regulate crypto use. This new crypto law would have reportedly allow their citizens to pay their taxes in crypto and also allow them to use crypto as a form of payment for businesses. Also in today's show, we'll be taking a look at the overall crypto market. As you can see, all the major cryptos are currently correcting and in the red, but where's the Bitcoin price likely to go next? Find out all this plus so much more in today's show. Here Crypto News Alerts, I drop a brand new episode every single day. The goal is to get to 100,000 subs along with a $100,000 Bitcoin price. And if you like getting that crypto, be sure to smash that subscribe button and ring that bell to turn on all notifications to receive daily premium crypto news alerts every single day, just like this. Today's episode is brought to you by FTX US, built by traders for traders. That's right, FTX US is the best way to buy and sell Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, as well as other digital assets. And did you know you can trade crypto with up to 85% lower fees than its top competitors. That's right. There are no fixed minimum fees, no ACH transaction fees, and no withdrawal fees. Also note that FTX is the only leading exchange that supports both Ethereum and Solana NFTs, and there are no gas fees. And you might have heard of them from their Super Bowl commercial with Larry David or their partnership with Stephen Curry and Tom Brady. That's because the world's biggest names trust FTX. And they have a special promo they're running right now where if you download the FTX app today and use my promo code Crypto News, you can earn free crypto in every trade over $10 truly making this a no brainer. And the more you trade, the more you earn. So go ahead and download the FTX app today by clicking the link in the description right down below. Use my referral code Crypto News and let's start stacking those sats, shall we? All right, welcome back to another episode of Crypto News Alerts. I'm your host, JV. How's it going, Crypto Fam? Make some noise in the live chat. Now for the five things to watch out for in the Bitcoin market this week. Asia woes overtake French election relief. That's right, the key external event for risk assets at the start of this week is the French election, which was just won by Emmanuel Macron, a sigh of relief for the market players concerned about a surprise victory from the far-right rival Marine Le Pen. Macron's second term is expected to lift French stocks in particular on April 25th open and the embattled euro along with them. Now the European Union, just like the US, faces a potent cocktail of inflation and plummeting bond markets with the European Central Bank nonetheless not yet taking decisive steps to raise interest rates or reduce its near $10 trillion balance sheet. The Bitcoin was unmoved at the Macron victory and risk assets already contending with an Asia downturn on April 25th as China rattles sentiment and quoting economist Holger, global stocks lost $3.3 trillion in market cap this week 
week as U.S. equities, after peaking Thursday morning, experienced steady fall lower as investors seemed to reconsider while they had been buying risk assets and were all filled with so much uncertainty. Global stocks worth $107.6 trillion, equal to 127% of GDP. Now for the next factor to keep your eyes out on this week in the Bitcoin market, dollar strength is back with a vengeance. That's right, one component of the macro landscape firmly in bullish mode to crypto traders is the US dollar. The US dollar currency index after wobbling at two year highs last week now looks to be continuing its uptrend at 101.61 at the time of this recording. The US dollar currency index is challenging its performance from March of 2020 when the coronavirus crash sent assets worldwide tumbling. Now dollar strength has really been a boon for Bitcoin and the inverse correlation while criticized by some appears to be firmly in control this month, as CryptoEd points out here, looks like the US dollar currency index dev announced a token burn or something. And as Preston Piss shares, we got the Bank of Japan implementing yield curve control while the yen is collapsing and we have the Fed about to hike 50 BPS while the dollar is making new highs. Something sure feels like it's about to break. Now for the third factor to keep your eyes out on this week in the Bitcoin market, the weekly chart prints fourth straight red candle. That's right, Bitcoin is looking anything but rosy on April 25th. While the weekend managed to avoid significant volatility, the weekly close still disappointed, coming in at just under last week's level. This, nonetheless, means that there are now four red candles in a row on the weekly chart, something that Bitcoin has not seen since June of 2020, according to data from Cointelegraph Markets Pro and TradingView. Now, the downtrend then continued overnight to see Bitcoin fall below 39,000, a position it maintains at the time of this recording. Now, traders are eyeing various chart features for clues as to where the pair is headed next, but bullish inklings are decidedly few and far in between. For popular trader and analyst Red Capital, it's the Ichimoku cloud looming overhead that could cause further losses for the king crypto. As he shares here, during retest one, Bitcoin fake broke down from the cloud before reversing. During retest two, Bitcoin wick sub cloud before reversing. Now retest three is in progress. Bitcoin needs to reclaim cloud as support. It is crucial. Bitcoin doesn't flip cloud into resistance to avoid downside. And as shared here by Big Sheds, visual what happened last time Bitcoin lost the three-day moving average 200 after a bull run, not a prediction, just an observation. And as shared here by Matthew Highland, Bitcoin comparison to the 2018-2019 bear market bottom compared to the current structure Bitcoin has been in since January of this year. We have similar time frame, a series of lower highs and higher lows, creation of a higher high and pullback after the first higher high. It is crucial that 37,600 holds. And as Crypto Tony shares in his Bitcoin update, shared this a couple of days ago, and my thoughts have not changed, looking for that sweep down, at which point I would then be looking for signs of a relief rally to play off from. So there you have it. Now for the fourth factor to keep your eyes out on this week in the Bitcoin market, Bitcoin hodlers put in a new record. That's right. The choppy nature of the lower time frame price action on the King Crypto is an uninspiring trade for anyone but the most experienced players. And as such, it is perhaps of little surprise that the majority of hodlers are choosing to stay hands off and do what they do best. This is now reflected in on-chain data, which shows that the proportion of the Bitcoin supply that has stayed dormant for at least a year is now at all-time highs. As Glassnode points out, the percentage of the Bitcoin supply last active one plus years ago just crossed 64% for the first time ever. The percentage of old coins continues to trend up. Where my long-term Bitcoin hodlers at make some noise in the live chat. Now for the fifth and final factor to keep your eyes out on this week in the Bitcoin market, and that's the fundamentals still pointing to the moon. That's right. It's not just the casual steadfast hodlers who are stubbornly refusing to reduce their Bitcoin exposure despite the grim outlook. A look at Bitcoin's network fundamentals shows that the miners are also anything but bearish when it comes to investing. A frequent story of the year, but nonetheless an impressive one, given that the price is moving in the opposite direction. Bitcoin's network hash rate and difficulty are both due to make new all-time highs. This week, let's break and go. As we know, the Bitcoin price follows the hash rate. And before I break down next story of the day, Skybridge Capital goes all in on crypto, betting on tremendous growth ahead. But first, let's take a quick look at the overall crypto market. As you can see, Bitcoin, Ether, and all the major alts are currently correcting. And in the red, with Bitcoin down almost 2% for the day, maintaining just above $38,800, while Ethereum is down 2.5%, trading just under $2,900, while Solana, Polkadot, Luna, XRP, Avalanche, Binance Coin, and Cardano are all correcting. And in the red. But all right, now let's break down our next story of the day. Skybridge Capital is working on pivoting the majority of its assets under management to digital assets as the sector represents tremendous growth 
For the firm, the hedge fund was founded by former United States politician Anthony Scaramucci in 2005 and first delved into Bitcoin in late 2020. The firm also has money deployed in other hedge funds, late stage private tech companies and real estate with its total assets under management reportedly being around seven point three billion dollars skybridge now manages a seven million dollar bitcoin fund among others and has been actively working to get a spot bitcoin etf approved by the u.s sec and speaking with bloomberg in the lead up to the annual skybridge alternatives conference known as salt this week skarmucci said that the firm is repositioning itself to eventually be a leading cryptocurrency asset manager and advisor quitting him here we made a decision during the pandemic that we had to relitigate our entire portfolio there is a pre-pandemic world and a post-pandemic world, and the post-pandemic world has a lot more government deficits. It has a lot more uncertainty related to growth. For us, we think cryptocurrency markets represent tremendous growth. It comes with volatility, certainly, but I think over the three to five years, we'd like that trajectory. He added, Skybridge Director of Business Development, John Darcy, noted that the firm's growing focus on crypto was brought about due to a huge drawdown in the credit portion of the firm's hedge fund manager portfolio, seeking out investments and stronger growth-oriented managers. The firm is now looking for allocations across many crypto assets and blockchain projects, with Darcy noting that Skybridge is extremely bullish on the sector. What we decided to do was a portion of that capital that was previously allocated to credit managers was invested directly into crypto assets like Bitcoin and Ethereum, but then also rotate capital into crypto asset managers like Multicoin, Polychain, Pantera, people of that nature, he said. Now, the bullish comments comes just weeks after Scaramucci noticed that the blockchain industry had a very bright future, but was concerned by some absolutely despicable U.S. politicians that could hamper the growth of the local sector. And speaking on the SEC with Bloomberg, Scaramucci seemed relatively optimistic that the agency will approve a spot Bitcoin ETF once a few more factors fall into place, while also noting that its application denial in January was not necessarily specific to them, as he shares here. I think the SEC is taking the position that because the cash trading of Bitcoin is happening all over the world, that they don't have a one market clearing for all buys and sells, so they are worried about price manipulation. But over time, because of the transparency of the markets, I think they're going to get more comfortable with it. So there you have it. Let me know if you agree or disagree with Anthony Scaramucci. And before I break down next story of the day, weakening global economy could trigger the next parabolic crypto bull run, according to macro guru, Raul Pao. But first, let's take a quick look at the overall crypto market cap, sitting just under $1.8 trillion, with about $81 billion in volume in the past 24 hours, with the current Bitcoin dominance at 41.2%, with the Ether dominance at 19.2%. And checking out the top 100 cryptocurrency gainers in the past 24 hours, we have ApeCoin leading the pack of four and a half percent trading just above 17 bucks followed by dogecoin up four percent trading just under 14 cents followed by gmt up almost two percent trading at three dollars and 23 cents and now checking out the top 100 cryptocurrency gainers for the past week you can see ape up 54 and a half percent gmt up 35.8 percent kava up 23.6 percent and crv up 22.7 percent and now checking out one of my favorite indicators it's the crypto greed and fear index shows we're currently rated a 23 out of 100 in extreme fear. Yesterday was a 24, last week a 24, and last month a 51 neutral. And if you're not familiar with the Crypto Greed and Fear Index, extreme fear can be a sign. Investors are too worried. That could be a great buying opportunity like we're witnessing right now. BTFD, buy that freaking dip. And when investors are getting too greedy, that means the market is due for a correction. But all right, now let's break down our next story of the day. Former Goldman Sachs executive Raul Powell says that the changes in the global market conditions could set off the next bull run for the king crypto. Send it. In a new interview with BitBoy Crypto, Powell says that while he is still bullish on crypto, the markets need a shot in the arm to ignite the next leg of the bull market. As he shares here, I actually think that we are still probably in kind of the first phase of the next bull leg up. That's what it feels like to me, but we need to see something change. What is this thing that's going to change to do that? My guess is if the U.S. economy or the global economy starts Starts weakening, then the market is going to say, oh, there's going to be a lot less rate hikes than expected. And therefore, that tends to be good for crypto or technology, kind of like Kathy Wood style technology investments. I think at the margin, it's those kind of things. The macro guru also says that institutions continue to invest in the crypto space, even as the number of retail investors dwindled as a result of inflation. As he shares here, retail came out in May. And the reason they came out in May was because inflation started rising. And so people had less money in their pocket. We just saw less activity from retail. Retail, but the institutions have been there. I'm seeing institution asset allocation. I'm speaking to all the biggest pension funds, family offices, banks, everybody, and they're all setting themselves up. People are starting 
to allocate capital. Very powerful words coming from the macro guru. Now, Powell also says that retail traders will return once the crypto market starts showing signs of life. As he shares here, people keep thinking there's going to be a wall of money where one day everybody comes in at once. It doesn't work that way. It's like a tide that comes in and before you know it, you're that deep. Parabolic moves happen once you start to see the price move. I know that sounds ridiculous, but right now, retail will come back in if they sense they can make money, but they won't do it if they can't because they can't take that risk. So there you have it. Let me know if you agree or disagree with the macro guru and watch this entire video between BitBoy and Raul Powell. Check the show notes below the video in the description. And before I break down our final breaking story of the day, the Central African Republic adopts Bitcoin as an official currency. Another domino has fallen. But first, I want to remind you to smash that show more button right below this video in the description for a detailed analysis of what's going on in the crypto market. This goes for all 1200 plus videos right here on my YouTube channel. Also, some very helpful resources for you to plug into including my crypto merch store live at merch.cryptonewsalerts.net. Also be sure to smash that subscribe button and ring that bell to turn on all notifications to receive daily premium crypto news alerts every single day, just like this. And of course, you can find me on all the major podcasts and platforms from Spotify, home of the Joe Rogan experience to Apple's iTunes and Google Play. And if you're listening to the pod, be sure to check out the YouTube channel at cryptonewsalerts.net for the full premium experience with video. And of course, you can follow me on crypto Twitter, Facebook, Telegram, and TikTok. So wherever you at, be sure to plug in and follow me there. But all right, now let's break down our final breaking story of the day. As Samson Mao shares here, the Central African Republic adopts Bitcoin as an official currency. Another domino, quoting this Forbes article, the Central African Republic has become the first country in Africa to adopt Bitcoin as a payment currency and a worldwide first. The National Assembly unanimously adopted the bill to help put the country's plan for economic recovery and peace building on track. Let's freaking go. Now, the Central African Republic has become the center of a hot buzz in the crypto world amid various reports of it adopting Bitcoin, quite similar to El Salvador. However, contrary to popular headlines, the African nation has not adopted Bitcoin as the legal tender. Instead, it has reportedly legalized the use of cryptocurrencies in financial markets. That's the difference. Now, the cryptocurrency bill was introduced by Justin Zacco, the Minister of Digital Economy, Post and Telecommunications on April 21st, and was unanimously approved by the lawmakers in the parliament, despite a protest from the opposition, reported RFI that the crypto law aims to establish a favorable environment for the inclusive growth of the crypto sector in the region. Minister Zacco also highlighted the growing difficulties in sending money from the African nation and believed that the adoption of crypto would help in resolving that issue. Now, the new law would also reportedly allow traders and businesses to make crypto payments and also make way for tax payments in crypto through authorized entities. Now, the new crypto law has also made provisions for offenders who break the law According to one report, offenders could be jailed for up to 20 years and fined between 100 million and 1 billion African francs. Now, Glor, the founder of Kive Claire, a Bitcoin beach inspired refugee project in the Congo, explained the details of the new law and shared the following. The real implication for people is that they can now have access to currencies other than their local currency while being protected by law and transfer money at a lower cost. And above all, they can carry out financial transactions without banks while being protected by the law. Now, a total of 14 countries currently use the CFA franc pegged to the euro printed in France and its monetary policy is controlled by Western powers. So do keep that in mind. If you want a decentralized currency that is not subject to inflation and mass manipulation, seek no further than the King Crypto. While the official peg was set at one euro to 655 CFA francs, the fiat has been depleting in value for quite some time. Thus, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies are growing in popularity among countries troubled by the national economic crisis. So there you have it. What other countries do you feel likely to make Bitcoin legal next? Let me know in the comments right down below. Now for the top three comments from yesterday's episode, Inner Dinosaur wrote, thanks JV, the market's a bit flat, but it will change soon enough. Take full advantage of the dip or forever hold your breath. Amen, fam. You know it. BTFD. Hodl. And our next featured comment comes from Mark Palmer, who wrote, Oh, yes, let's all listen to Raul Powell, the well known self promoting mystic Meg, who told everyone that Ethereum would be at 20 to 40,000 by March of this year. Strange how he's suddenly forgotten all, but he can still see into his crystal ball. You make a great point. Predictions we must take with a grain of salt. The macro guru was definitely way off the mark on that 20 to $40,000 ETH prediction for March. 
of this year. Now for our third and final featured comment comes from Nate, another useful video JV. Thumbs up and your viewer, Digital Gravity, cracked me up. Basically thinking of treating Mark Cuban as a constraining indicator. His reasoning is sound, but I'll never count Mark Cuban out either. As for me anticipating a likely for the pullback by Bitcoin, even to the $28, $30,000 level, maybe even a shakeout drop and reversal from there, then triggering the run of all runs after a year-long consolidation and so much new big money entering the space. Cheers, fam. Can't wait for the crypto market to truly blast off as well. Let's freaking go. And to be featured on tomorrow's episode, drop me a comment right down below.